Hi guys, so today I have a really fun problem for you and uh, this is a problem from the IOQM and uh, we're going to learn a little bit of number theory today. We're going to see how we can reduce equations more and a little bit about primitive roots and generating perfect squares. So let's begin. This was the problem number 13 from the uh, Indian Olympiad Qualified Mathematics in 2021. It's actually a pretty nice problem. It's one of the harder problems on the tests and uh, we're going to see how we can use elementary number theory in order to solve this. In this video, we are going to be learning how working and reducing equations modern works. So how taking modern works, what's the intuition behind uh, reducing an equation modern. Then we're also going to uh, have a look at primitive roots model n. Uh, we're also going to look at generating perfect squares and we're going to look at book solutions to the IQM. And at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. Right? This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So, we need to find all natural numbers n such that the modulus of 2 raised power n plus 5 raised power n minus 65 is a perfect square. Right? So, this is an equation given to us and this needs to be perfect. So how exactly are we supposed to work with this? Well, obviously it's a number theory problem. Most likely we're going to need some ideas of uh, congruence model law. So what you can basically see is that we have five, five raised power n and 65, which are both really multiples of five. And if you know a little bit about primitive model, you can see that two is a primitive, uh, primitive root mod five, right? So what does this mean? That basically means that there will exist an integer k so that 2 raised to the power k is congruent to a mod phi for all integers a crore prime to phi. That, that, that's basically what it means, right? Now we can see that 2 is a primitive root mod phi. We have phi raised to the power n which will be a multiple of 5 and we have 65. So it's probably, it's, it's probably we kind of get the intuition that we will have to work mod phi, right? Cool. So what I thought is maybe we can reduce this into a certain uh, a number of cases. The case one would be when 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 is less than 0. So that means the modulus was open as 65 minus 2 raised to the power n minus 5 raised to the power n. And this obviously happens for n is equal to 1 and 2. And because we only have two cases, we can check them by hand. And we can actually see that at n is equal to 1, we get the expression as um, 65 minus 2 minus 5 which is 58 which is not a perfect square and at n is equal to 2 we get the expression as 65 minus 4 minus 25 which is 36 which is a perfect square so n is equal to 2 is a valid solution right so let's move on to the other case uh, case 2 where 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 is actually greater than 0 so the modulus opens in positive right now this obviously happens at n greater than or equal to 3 and uh, so we will have this expression 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 without the mod symbol. And if we just reduce this in mod 5, we will get this as 2 raised to the power n mod 5. Right? And uh, yeah, so 2 raised to the power n mod 5. Now let's see what values they can have. So let's just make a table between n and 2 raised to the power n and uh, see what values it will take. Now if you take n1, 2 raised to the power n mod 5 would be equal to 2. Right? If we take n2, 2 raised to the power n mod 5 is 4. If we take n as 3, we will get 3. And if we take n as 4, we will get 1. And from Fermat's little theorem, we can see that this process, this, this cycle keeps on repeating. So if I have n is equal to 5, 2 raised to the power n mod 5 will be 2, and so on and so forth. The cycle will keep repeating. Now we can actually see that these are the only perfect squares mod 5, 1 and 4 in this case. Right? So these are the only perfect squares mod 5. So I can actually see that n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4 give us a perfect square mod 5, right? So I can deduce that n needs to be equal to 2 to 2m. So n has to be even, basically. That's the crux of it. Why does n has to be even? Because we need a perfect square, right? And 1 and 4, the only perfect square uh, 2 raised to the power n mod 5, right? So that basically means n is a perfect square. Now if n is equal to 2m, and uh, we also saw that in this case, n is greater than equal to 3, Therefore, we notice that m has to be greater than or equal to 2. And again, I'm going to split this up into two cases, case A and case B. Case A, we are going to consider where m is equal to 2 and m is equal to 3. And uh, in the next case, we're going to uh, consider the scenario where 
m is greater than or equal to 4 okay now at m is equal to uh, 2 and m is equal to 3 we can actually see that n, n will be 4 and n will be 6 and uh, you can actually see that n is equal to 4 actually satisfies by just checking and then n is equal to 6 does not satisfy okay so i'll leave this to you to check out yourself now obviously we come out of the case b and this is really where the where the crux of the problem is where the problem is really interesting right now what is the case b case b is um nothing but m is greater than or equal to 4 and since n was 2m n has to be greater than or equal to 8 right now i can write 2 raised to the power n as 2 raised to the power 2m uh, and that will be greater than or equal to 2 raised to the power 8 which is 128 right now 2 uh, which is uh, basically 128 right now if i just consider uh, the given expression what is the given expression 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 now if i just consider 2 raised to the power n minus 65 will it be greater than 0 for n greater than or equal to 8 of course it will be Right. This is going to be greater than or equal to 128 minus 65, which is greater than, which is obviously greater than zero, right? So two raised to the power n minus 65 is greater than zero, so this expression will always be um, five raised to the power n greater than that, right? So can I establish uh, some sort of an inequality over here? And you will actually see why I'm trying to do that. So I can actually write this term that we um, intend to find out if it's a perfect square or not. This will be less than five raised to the power n, obviously and um, which will be greater than zero as all exponential functions are greater than zero and this 5 raised to the power n is nothing but 5 raised to the power m whole square right as n was 2m so i can uh, get this inequality on this side and on the other side i can write this as um, this this quantity is less than 25 raised to the power m plus 4 raised to the power m plus 1 right and why i did this well we can just we can just transform this into uh, something that we can work with so we can write this as 5 raised to the power n whole square this will be less than plus 2 times 5 raised to the power m plus 1 and you can actually see that the inequality still actually holds and this is nothing but 5 raised to the power m plus 1 whole square so what can we see from here we can actually see that 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 um, is is uh, less than 5 raised to the power m plus 1 whole square and at the same time 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 is greater than 5 raised to the power m whole square right or in other words 2 raised to the power n plus 5 raised to the power n minus 65 lies between two perfect squares two consecutive perfect squares right if you take 5 raised to the power m s t you can see that this quantity lies between two perfect square and therefore this can never be perfect square therefore we have zero solutions in this case right so therefore the only two solutions are n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 4 right so yeah that was the that was the question that was given to us and uh, i really hope you enjoyed that it was it was a pretty good problem it was one of the more challenging problems in the tests and we really had to work uh, quite a bit in congruence modeler to solve this one Okay, so coming on to certain book sessions for the IQM, we have challenges in terms of pre-college mathematics, mathematical circles, excursion mathematics, a test of mathematics at 10 plus 2 level, elementary number theory by David Burton, elementary theory of numbers by Sierpinski. We also have problem solving strategies by Arthur Engel and principles and techniques and combinatrix. Right, so at the very end, I have a similar but challenging problem for you. And uh, I want you to find all m, n such that 2 raised to the power m plus 3 raised to the power n is a perfect square. So 2 raised to the power n plus 3 raised to the power n will be k square for some k. And mn are our natural numbers. And as always, if you make any progress on this question, if you're able to solve it, please let me know, please let me know in the comment section below and uh, I'll get back to you. Until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. 
For more information, visit chinta.com.